I'm Steph. And I'm Jeff. Each week, we review a film that's streaming online. As writers, we'll deep dive into the characters and plot to tell you if it's a good story. Listen at your own risk. This review contains spoilers. Now sit back. Relax. And and enjoy enjoy Stream On. Today, we'll be reviewing The Bling Ring, streaming on Netflix. Mark and Rebecca are two rich kids living in Los Angeles. They are also the head of an impromptu gang of thieves who track celebrities in the gossip media, figure out when they won't be home, and rob them. Hey, that actually sounds like a good movie. What happened? The Bling Ring was written and directed by Sofia Coppola, and it's based on a Vanity Fair article the Suspects Wore Louboutins by Nancy Jo Sales, which is a true story of high school and young adult kids who rob celebrities in Los Angeles during a 2008 to 2009 crime spree. The film stars Emma Watson as Nikki, Tessa Formiga as Sam, Israel Broussard as Mark, Katie Chang as Rebecca, Leslie Mann as Lori, who's the mom to Nikki's character, and Claire Julian as Chloe. And other than Lori, everybody else I mentioned, Nikki, Sam, Mark, Rebecca, and Chloe, those are the five main characters that are a part of the bling ring. So Steph, this is one of yours. Why did you pick this? So um, I'm a fan of some of Sofia Coppola's work, like Lost in Translation and The Virgin Suicides, I thought were pretty solid movies. Also, we had done another Coppola film, Roman Coppola film, CQ, that I was disappointed with. So I was looking for uh, a different Coppola to see how Francis's spawn or relations are doing in terms of their filmmaking endeavors. Um, I also thought the subject matter itself was really interesting about how these teenagers were able to have an almost year-long crime spree and steal from wealthy celebrities. I I just found the topic interesting and I read the article about it. So figured it would make for a fun film, especially in the hands of a Coppola. Well, this film might be proof that cinematic talent is not genetically based. Is there anything about the plot that you'd like to talk about? This film was pretty bad. Uh, Let me just start with a punchline. Um, I think one of the main issues I had with this film is that it had a lot of shallow characters and there was really no clear protagonist that stuck out for me. So it, it felt like Sophia wasn't really that invested in any of her characters and in developing them out in an interesting way. Uh, And, you know, I I try to like assume positive intent that maybe what Sophia was trying to do is portray them as shallow and empty people because that's sort of who they are. You know, they are interested in rich people's lives and following them and celebrity gossip and then stealing all their nice clothes and shoes and jewelry and purses and whatnot. And so maybe she was trying to show how shallow they were, which is why she didn't develop the characters. But as a viewer, that doesn't make for a good film to have poorly developed characters. I I think what would have worked better for me is if she had taken one of the characters and fleshed them out more. Um, Mark's character seems to be the one that potentially could have had the most death attached to him. We see him a little bit internally struggling with, you know, having an absent parent. He's trying to fit in, you know, his sexuality, right? He's like, figuring out if he's gay and all of that stuff, right? And and then he ends up falling in in with the bad kids, the bling ring group, right? That gets him into stealing and he uses him um, to uh, get, he, he wants to be accepted. So they sort of use that to have him start um, getting involved with helping them steal from these celebrities' homes. But he didn't, go there enough with Mark to really feel for him. He becomes as shallow as the rest of the characters are. 
Um, so that was a huge issue for me. What, what did you think about, I'll, I'll stop there. I've got more to say about these characters, but what did you think about Bar- Mark's character? I don't know how you could have more to say about these characters, honestly. As far as Mark, he could have been a good point of view character. And I think probably somewhere along the line, uh, Coppola wanted him to be the point of view character. The problem is these characters are an insult to one dimensional characters. There's nothing there. They're just boring, interchangeable people. I'm not even sure where to start, honestly. Stories need something to organize around, usually. I mean, you're always going to have stories that can break any particular mold or structure, but this isn't one of those. You need a character, the point of view character, the protagonist, the person that you're following through the journey, or you need a strong theme. You can even get away with just really strong visuals. This movie had nothing, though. And as far as Mark's character, as I said, there were some there were some stabs at making him a more traditional protagonist and giving him some depth. But there were some moments that a good writer would have leveraged into giving insight that don't go anywhere. And I'll give one example. Mark says that he loves Rebecca. And that this is like the first person he's really felt like that before the first like real friend he's ever had. But that seems like something that a better writer would use to then examine that character. What is it about this person that is attractive to him? Why does he feel so emotionally invested in her? But it doesn't really go any place. And having read the article, that is taken from the actual person who he actually said that about um i don't her name isn't rebecca all the names are changed from the article but i'm just going to call her rebecca for purposes of this so mark actually said that about rebecca so it's an actual quote from the person but a movie shouldn't just be about extracting quotes and going well there's your character it should be about examining that story should be about examining people and why they do things this movie for all these characters, except on an extremely superficial level, doesn't really do that. And that clearly was Coppola's intent. She clearly wanted to show how shallow, materialistic, and image-driven these people are. The problem is it doesn't make for very engaging characters, particularly if there's nothing else happening that's interesting. Is there anything about this film that like, at all interested you, that engaged you at all? Not about the characters themselves. I mean, I found some of the scenes, like going into Paris Hilton's actual house, (laughs) that was interesting just to see inside her house. But no, I mean, there there wasn't much there there in this film. And I agree with you. There was there could have been a lot done with. I mean, Rebecca, who's the ringleader for all practical purposes, is very narcissistic and uses people. And you could have really shown how Mark got used by Rebecca and how unhealthy it is to be infatuated or develop feelings for someone that is a narcissist. I mean, there's a lot of material right there. Um, and, And they just didn't do any of it. Uh, I, even Emma Watson couldn't save this film. Like they have her doing this Valley girl, (laughs) fake American accent with Nikki, her portrayal of Nikki. And it's, it's just so over the top. Like it doesn't feel authentic. Like I, I think Emma struggled with doing a good uh, Valley girl, American accent. And to me, it was, it was so jarring. It pulled me out of it. Um, and I, and I get that they were trying to show how superficial and fake she was, but it was, it was too much. It wasn't, it, it, it didn't feel baked and subtle into the film. It felt overacted to me. Um, and it's just such a shame because the real life story this is based on is really interesting. You know, these, uh, kind of bored teens that have absent parents that are, have become obsessed with celebrity culture and come up with a way to stalk them on social media so they're not home when they go and rob their homes and manage to figure out how to rob these um, 
homes, um, especially in its millions of dollars they steal. Uh, and Paris Hilton gets robbed multiple times. So it, it's you would think that there could have been more done with such an interesting story by Sophia, but instead you just get watching these shallow characters and, and it becomes really repetitive too. Like they, it's like, okay, another scene where they're robbing another house and stealing some fancy clothes. Like I got bored after a while of seeing the same scenes over and over and over again. Uh, and even the ending wasn't satisfying. Like you, you follow Mark as he gets on a prison bus after, you know, they've been sentenced and Instead, like Rebecca, who was the ringleader and the most narcissistic of them all, we should have been fall to see what happens to her more than Mark. But I think, again, that was her attempt to keep Mark as the point of view character. But uh, yeah, none of them came across as a true protagonist in this film. Uh, so it just it, it just was a mess because of a lack of one point of view protagonist character to follow and a lack of a clear message uh it was it was almost like the camera was a neutral observer of human behavior and you were watching kind of a um an anthropologist looking at what was happening and watching it from an anthropologist lens is is not an interesting story if you have strong characters or a really strong plot i, th I think you can get away without necessarily having judgment about those characters I mean, you don't need to necessarily have, like, you know, some moral of the story. The problem with this film isn't just that, although that, that is an issue with this movie. It is also that, in addition to the flaws of the characters or the fact they really don't have characters, is that a lot of this film is very repetitive. You mentioned the breaking and entering scenes, which actually thought were probably the most lively parts of the film because you get to see a little bit of how each character is acting in a kind of what could be seen as a mix of wish fulfillment and stressful situation. A lot of this film though is taken up with shots of characters driving around in cars, singing, and then going to nightclubs. And it just gets it gets to be filler and this is not a long movie. I think it clocked in at like 82 minutes. It feels a lot longer after a while. You see what happens when you don't have a plot that this would be like, quite frankly, this would be like reading a book where all the characters have a single trait. The plot is either non-existent or not engaging. And it's just page or page of description, 150, 200 pages of that. I'd be ready to jump off a bridge. I, really go into back to what I was saying though, it's like, I'm not certain who this movie is for. Most films, most stories you have some audience in mind. And it doesn't mean that everything has to be some deep meditation on the human condition I'm going to watch, you know, fast and furious 37. You want to see hot people driving cars around in ways that defy physics, but that's the audience. But we know what we're getting with that. We know what the plot is, right? There's going to be a villain. There's going to be a hero. There's going to be some sexy people and some cars. And like we generally, there is still a plot there, even if it's a very formulaic one. But also it's because the storytellers know who the audience is. They know what to deliver to the audience to either entertain them, engage them, scare them, shock them, make them fall in love, whatever it is. This movie, I have no idea who Sofia Coppola is making this for, except it came across like some sort of home movie almost like it was for her. Like she read this article and just went and shot some of her Hollywood friends doing, you know, pretending to break into places and stuff. There didn't seem like there was much more thought behind it than that. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, again, I'm guessing because there was not a clear message and not a clear protagonist, but I, it, yeah, I did feel like she is just sort of, taking us along on the ride and like almost filming like, yeah, documentary style, watching them steal things and envying celebrities and staying as neutral as possible to any message around their behavior um, to the point where it's not even satisfying 
like the courtroom drama, right? The finale where we're they're going to be sentenced, right? Tried and sentenced. I mean, we get cheated out of it. It's basically we see the court, the doors opening, uh, and they start the trial, and then the doors closing and then opening again and it's over they and then they're walking out and we like see what their sentences are and mark gets on the bus and then we have like an interview with emma watson's character nikki and it's just like the court i felt cheated like this is building up to the final like courtroom scene and we didn't even get the courtroom drama that a movie like this should have had in it um, so we could really get the sense of, you know, why these kids were being convicted, like what was their evidence and this and that, and what was their explanation on the witness stand. And yeah, I mean, it was just, oh, it was so poorly done. I guess what I'm struggling with is what is the point Sophia is trying to make in this film? Is it that having a shallow existence and being caught up in the celebrity lifestyle of envy leads to behavior like this? Um, Is it that, you know, there's just the narcissism in Hollywood bleeds down into that your average Joe and Jane, like an Emma Watson's character? I I don't know. Like, I, I just left not understanding the message, the characters. I, I, I left feeling as empty as these characters are. <laughs> Um, maybe that was her point, the emptiness of it all, but didn't make for a good film. There is a story in here somewhere. There's a, this is good material. The way to fix it, you know, you focus on Mark and Rebecca and really dive into their relationship and, you know, use Mark as your point of view character. I, I don't think I even needed to have like a specific moral ending in the sense of having like a courtroom showing justice being done, even in the ham-fisted way that uh, actually not even ham-fisted, just unsatisfying way that Coppola does. The thing that's lacking again is that there's absolutely nothing to be invested in with these people. And I don't know, maybe the actual people are just this shallow. Maybe they really are just like this. I doubt it because I don't think anyone can be this shallow and still be conscious, but Maybe they are, but when you're making a movie, even if it's about a real event, you're telling a story. These characters are doing, you know, even if broadly everything they did, they really did. And some of the lines or things that she lifted from the article, these are still your characters in a semi-fictional story. At that point, you do have to do what a good storyteller does, which is give your characters depth, give them motivation, give them some interactions that you know, help further define them and put them in the middle of a plot that has some point to it. Yeah. I mean, show backstory on their family lives, like what's going on in their families of origin that allows them to have so much free time unsupervised on their hands to go rob celebrity mansions at night. Like to me, there's an interesting story there. Like clearly there's some parental issues and family discord that's leading to them being able to have the free reign to do that. Like it, there, there's so much you could explore about the modern day family, absent parents, superficiality, and the focus on external versus internal um, locus of control. I mean, there's just, there's so much there and she did none of it. There's a great moment, and I'm going to say great moment just in the context of this film might sound odd, but where Mark, Rebecca, and um, one of the other characters is sitting on the beach, and they're talking, and they're talking about what they want to do, and they all want to have their own lifestyle brand. I think that's great in the sense that, see, that could be interesting. This could really have gotten into, celebrity, you know, not celebrity culture. Well, actually, yeah, celebrity culture. In the article, a number of people say that uh, Rebecca basically wanted to steal these clothes because these are the people that she idolized. She wanted to be them. You get some of that in the movie, but that's the kind of thing I would have had a much deeper dive into. Look at the psychology behind why she does these things and why she gets marked into doing them. And that 
for Mark, it's more, you know, he's attached himself to this narcissist. And for some reason that we don't really understand, but you could expand on that, he feels a deep attachment to her. She's doing this because this is the closest she thinks she's going to get to the kind of lifestyle that she sees on, you know, TMZ or on E or things like that. And she wants to be those people. So there are themes and stories and plots and interesting characters conceptually in the story this is based on. Coppola doesn't do any of that. And I ultimately am left wondering why this movie was even made. Yeah, no, I think we have very similar feelings. I, one other thing I wanted to point out that, you know, in an already bad film, to me, this also didn't work is that we start this film like we we see the film starts off with like a breaking and entering scene it's set to like fun music like that okay it opened well like I was interested after that first breaking and entering scene but then it gets into sporadically throughout the film you get interviews with the different characters and there it's after everything happens right so then you're you're hearing their perspective on what happened and then it goes back to like them robbing something or at the club or whatnot and to me that way of storytelling didn't work that well i would have rather not had those interspersed interviews in in the film like tell it linearly so we're not sure what happens to them until the end versus we kind of have an idea of what happens to them by seeing the interviews going on. I mean, what are your thoughts about how she wove in the interviews after they had gotten caught? That was a sad and tropey attempt at creating depth and conveying the message. It was not well done. I thought it broke up a film that already had serious pacing issues. I agree. This should have been a, completely linear story you start from mark's point of view you see like the first act is him and rebecca getting to know each other and then they get into the theft in act two bring other friends in get to you know start getting heavily more hev more heavily into drugs because you know that kind of stuff and eventually get caught having these interspersed interviews did nothing for me other than remind me of how clunky this movie was and how poorly it was being told yeah i think it was used to get it well the why they did it like help us understand their motives potentially but it would have been better for us to guess their motives as we watch these characters develop and unfold especially if you had fleshed out mark and rebecca more and let us guess our own why and then sort of at the end maybe have have the courtroom drama and then have some interviews after that as a nod to like the Vanity Fair article, for example. But having us be told along the way why the characters think they did it just added to the issues, the many issues of this film. So yeah, it's just disappointing overall. Anything else you have to say about this film, Jeff? Not really. Do, do you have a best scene? Well... <laughs> It was a struggle, but visually there was a scene I really liked. It's I, it's the glass house robbery scene. So it was it was shot um, in in an interesting way. So the the camera is placed like high up in the Hollywood Hills, and it and it looks down on Adrena Patridge's modern glass house, who's one of the celebrities that gets robbed, and we see our bling ring darting all over the glass house, like up and down the floors, grabbing stuff. Uh, and, and from that distance at night at like, we are sitting on top of Hollywood Hills with the camera or binoculars looking down on this like completely glass house. And you feel like the voyeur watching a crime. Um, and I, it was really well done. The cinematographer is Harris Savides and the movie was actually dedicated to him. He died sadly of cancer during post-production. And um, I, I did a little research. Apparently he's a very good cinematographer. And um, like that was 
well done. Uh, and so I have to give a nod to just that that scene and the cinematography of it. What about you, Jeff? It was a little bit of a struggle, but I did like the opening. As you mentioned, you know, that opening theft with the you know, peppy music in the background, all that worked well enough. And actually for a moment, I'm like, oh, this should be an interesting and, you know, stylistically interesting film. It just wasn't. But yeah, so that opening was fine. Do you have a least like scene? Can you pick one? Oh, it's it's hard to just land on one because this movie was overall pretty bad. Um, I, I would say there was all the scenes where we see the bling ring gang rifling through clothes, purses, jewelry, as they rob houses. Like the first time it was interesting. And the one of the times they were at Paris Hilton's house for the first time, just seeing how like, like crazy her house is in terms of just over the top wealth. Um, that was also interesting, but then it was like, okay, the third, the fourth, the fifth, it got really repetitive as the movie progressed and I got bored, like, oh, another purse that Nikki wants or whatever. It's, it, yeah, got very repetitive and boring. And so it became my least like scene because of how overdone it was. What about you, Jeff? Something similar. The repetitive nature of this story was wearing, um, you're basically watching the same 15 minute long movie six times. And at, I just, I mean, it was hard to pick something, a specific thing that was bad because everything is bad in this. Nothing really works in this movie, but that repetitive sequencing was just annoying. After a while, it seemed like this whole movie was an exercise in filler. I agree with you. The film felt, longer than it actually was because of how repetitive it got right did you know i mean did you realize it was only 82 minutes long i'm watching this i'm like oh my god is this thing how long is this like eight hours and like no it felt like gone with the wind like it felt so long <laughs> not 82 minutes but that just be that was how repetitive the film got is that it really dragged let's do our panda rating and wrap this thing up from zero to five pandas how many of them want to visit the Los Angeles of the bling ring? Not very many. I gave it a panda and a half. And really, I mean, that's generous. It's They had some good cinematography, especially the glass house scene. It was interesting seeing inside Paris Hilton's actual house where they were able to shoot. I mean, it was so extra. She has a nightclub room with a disco ball and a pole and pillows with her face on them. I mean, that was interesting um and you know other than that not much there's not much there it's some of the music i thought was entertaining um but i would suggest a hard pass on this film but if you're interested in the topic read the vanity fair article that the film is based on that is a far better and more interesting use of your time than watching the bling ring. What about you, Jeff? This gets my first zero pandas. No pandas want to be in this movie. It is the most pointless exercise in cinema I've seen in a long time. I watch a lot of movies, and I watch movies that technically would be worse than this, would have worse acting, are you know more solidly B movies or exploitation films, but this film because of the stuff we've talked about is it's like a nullity of movies. There's nothing happening in it that in any way is engaging. I would not waste my time with this film. I agree with you about the Vanity Fair article. If there is one good thing about this movie is it got me to track that article down and read it. And I would recommend that otherwise skip. Yes. Yeah, so I just want to acknowledge this is our first zero in the history of our stream on podcast uh i came close with 0.5 for high rise but the, it's a lot to get me to zero so yeah this is we've made history today with our first zero jeff i, I feel so excited there, there you go sofia coppola you 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 got me to make history on our podcast how exciting <laughs> 
She does have, to be fair, Lost in Translation is a great movie. So if you do want to watch a Sofia Coppola film that's good, watch Lost in Translation. I do want to say that is one reason I was maybe a little extra disappointed. I really like that movie. And I like some of the other stuff she's done. I This movie was, if anything, worse because she was the writer-director. Because I was expecting something else. Yeah, once you've had a few good hits, then you expect greatness out of someone. and Even competence would be nice. Okay, well, Jeff, what do we have next week? So next week, we will be looking at the 1956 version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, currently streaming on Amazon. Stream On is a production of Steph and Jeff Wright's Media. Reproduction without written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved, 2021.